What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I wanna talk about assignment operators for Python. All right, in the last video, we talked about dictionaries for Python. In this video, I wanna talk about assignment operators. But before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $27, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so we've already kind of looked at assignment operators before you just didn't even know it. So the equal to sign is an assignment operator. It allows us to assign something into a variable. So we've created variables before. We go say num equals 41, right? So we are assigning the number 41 into the variable num assignment operator. Okay, that's fine. You know, we don't generally think of a equal to sign as an assignment operator. That's technically what it is. We're just using this to create a variable or a dictionary or a list or whatever. We're assigning something into something. But there are a bunch of other assignment operators, and that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. And I've listed them right here. We've talked about math and math operators in a previous video. You know, plus, minus, multiplication, division exponent and modulus, that little funny one that returns the remainder. If you didn't see that video, you know, go back and watch it. But we can turn all of our math operators into assignment operators just by slapping an equal to sign at the end of it. So plus equals, minus equals, multiplication equals, division equals, exponent equals, and modulus equals. And what this does is it, for instance, the, the addition, it adds and then assigns. Right, so we're doing something and then we're assigning that back into the variable. So let's come down here and let's say we wanna add one to, to our number. We could go num equals num plus one, right? So let's save this and run it and see what happens. Fairly obvious what's gonna happen here. We get 42, right? We're just taking, taking our variable and adding one to it. So that works, sure, but a better way to do it is just to go num plus equals one, right? Uh, let's comment this out, right? So let's go ahead and change this to two so we get a different thing this time. So 41 plus two, we're adding and then assigning it back into num. So the answer should be 43, I think. My math is not strong, 43, right? So, all right, who cares? Well, it's just, Whenever you're writing code, you wanna be as elegant as possible. You wanna write as few things as possible, as, as little amount of code as possible. We call that being elegant, right? So why do this whole big long thing when you can just go plus equal? It's just easier. So there's lots of times when you might wanna do this, especially when we get into like loops and counters. A counter is like one, two, three, four. It keeps track of a count. Well, every time you loop, you wanna add one to your counter. So you can keep track of how many times you've looped around, right? We'll talk about loops in a few videos from now. But, you know, that's that's one way you could use these assignment operators. And like I said, all of our math can be turned into assignment operators. So minus equal, you know, multiply equal. It will multiply and then assign. It will subtract and then assign. Divide and then assign. Uh, so that's kind of cool. So one thing to kind of take a look at here, let's get rid of this. And let's just come down here to our print statement. And let's go num plus one, right? So we want to print out our number, which is 41. And then we want to add one to it. So we can sort of already guess what's going to happen here, 42. But here's something that's kind of interesting. Now, if we go below here and print out num again, you know what's going to happen. Right here, it printed out 42. Is it gonna print out 42 here? Space out. That's the question, right? So let's save this and find out. We can come up here and run it again. So it's 42 the first time, but it's 41 the second time. What's going on here? Well, if we look at our code, the first time all we did was print out to the screen our variable plus one. We didn't then assign that back into the variable. So in the future, any time, if we wanna use num again, it's not gonna be 42 because we didn't assign this back in, right? It's just gonna be 41. So if you just need to 
print something to the screen, you could just go num plus one or whatever, right? But if you want to keep track of that for the future and then use it some other time in your program, that's a very simple program. Generally, your programs could be hundreds of lines long, thousands of lines, millions of lines. And, you know, if you need to keep track of something over time throughout that code and it needs to be, you know, incremented, be sure to use these assignment operators, these plus equals. Just sort of remember assignment operators with math, they will do the math and then assign it back in. And then from then on, all the time in the future, anytime you reference that variable, it's going to be that new variable. It's going to be 42, for instance. It's added and assigned. And like I said, all of these work plus, minus, multiplication, division, um, exponents, and the modulus. You still probably don't know what a modulus is, do you? You've forgotten. Yeah, it took me a while to remember that one. Modulus returns the, um, the remainder. So 5 divided by 2 the modulus would be zero because 10 divided by two, the modulus would be zero because 10 divided by two is five with nothing left over. 10 divided by three, the modulus would be one because three goes into 10 three times with one left over. It's that remainder, that one left over, that's what the modulus returns. Just a quick refresher. All right, so that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership, so you pay just $27 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 50,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com. We'll see you in the next video.